Hello there. General Kenobi. Actually, it's your ASMR friend. Just checking in on you. I hope you're doing well. Now, normally on this channel, I'm the guy behind the camera walking very, very slowly around Night City. Or running around trying to spread managed democracy and hell divers too. Or I do no commentary walking with a small game called Lake. Yeah, needless to say, the algorithm loves me. But anyway, we're here today to talk about the game I have not been able to stop playing since I picked it up. It's not a video game, as you can tell by the title, Star Wars Unlimited, the trading card game. So in this video, I'll talk about kind of what drew me in to the game, as well as how my uh, venture into it has been. Also, over the weekend, I participated in my first ever store showdown, and I'll talk about the deck that I used there and how my day went, how my showdown went. So yeah, back to that algorithm. I don't know. If you're here to try to find cool stuff about Star Wars Unlimited, this isn't the place. There's probably far more valuable videos on YouTube about Star Wars Unlimited. If you're here just to hang out, chill, talking about Star Wars Unlimited, just here to relax, then yeah, maybe you found the right video. I guess you'll have to stick around to find out. Well, with no further ado, Star Wars Unlimited is my first ever trading card game. Never played Magic. Star Wars Destiny, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! I know these names, but no, I never played those games. And I'm a big Star Wars nerd, so I actually had heard about this game. But never had the interest because it's a card game. Never played them, right? But on the weekend, a couple weekends ago, I was helping a friend uh, pass out flyers, well, hang up flyers in uh, LGS, as they call, local, no, LCS. Where is it LGS? Now we're getting hung up on the semantics. Local comic card store game, right? It's game store. We're going to have a lot of fun with names. Because I'm probably undiagnosed dyslexic. Can't even say it. So I was helping my friend hang up these flyers. And on the door was a poster. It says Star Wars Unlimited Weekly Play. Wednesdays at 6. And it just caught my eye. And I thought, wait a minute. They're playing this game weekly here? And this is how little I knew about the card game community. Card shops. I knew these places existed because I'm a toy collector. Maybe you didn't know that about me either. And so I've gone into stores like this in search of small little oddities, you know? I really just thought it was a place where friends got together to come and play. Which, obviously, of course, that is true too. But I didn't realize that there were run there were events run by the store like this and on a weekly basis no doubt so yeah it just kind of got me thinking and, and then i took a look at what the game is and the starter kit and looked at reviews and tutorials of how to play i was very interested very curious and the starter kit was only 30 bucks and so i thought you know for that deal, it's not too much. So I ordered it, and when it arrived, I went to the store that following Wednesday to, to try it out. 
brand new. I had no idea what to expect. I also wasn't sure of what the what the vibe or what the culture, what the etiquette would be like, you know. Would people be cool with this? Is this a thing like, hey, these are where like professionals play. You should play with your friends first before you get into something like that. I, I had no idea. So I just kind of threw myself into the unknown. And I'm very glad I did. That night was an unforgettable experience for me. I literally brought the starter deck. I had opened it before just to look at the cards. And yeah, it's in English. And there are words on the cards. I can read them. Some of it I understand. But Obviously, being brand new, I just didn't know what exactly all these things meant because there's definitely in these plays of, well, if you do this with this card, then this and that, you know, the synergies of it all. And uh, I went there and I hadn't even poked out the tokens, the little cardboard tokens that come with the game. Just doing that all that night. Didn't have a play mat. That was the first thing I noticed. Everyone has play mats and sleeves. And I didn't think I would get sleeves. I just thought, I don't really need them. Like, yeah, it's a card game, and I get that, you know, if you want to keep them preserved, but I'm probably pretty good with my cards, and that's probably too much. But then you hold the cards in your hand with sleeves, and shuffling around, and just how they feel, that little extra piece of protection. And now there's no way I would not put a sleeve on the card. It's a, it's like buying a cell phone and not getting a case for it. it. I don't know about you, I'm not brave enough to bear back my phone. No sir so. Same with my cards. Some are less valuable than others. But either way, in a 50 card deck, every card gets a sleeve. So that was something I learned. But yeah, that night, remember I didn't know what to expect, didn't know what the vibe would be, how they would play with someone that's never played before. Because also being very new, again, no magic or any other card game, and everyone was so cool. Everyone was helpful. They were willing to teach me. And they were patient with me and learning how to play. And uh, I did find I felt like some good tutorials, so I understood at least a little bit of the mechanics. But there was one guy in particular who I thought was really cool, uh, went a little bit above, where he was kind of teaching me a little bit about strategy and how, you know, okay, well, you have six resources. Sure, you can play your big six card resource right now, or maybe you should play you know, your two and your three, and then play that big card next round. And the importance of initiative. You know, maybe it would have been better to play, you have two cards you could play, well, just play one, have them play another, and then you take the initiative because you want that strike on their base or their unit first where the initiation can be important like that and so you know just small things that kind of opened my mind to that uh, i thought was really cool yeah and overall that night everyone like i said was cool i didn't win obviously uh but i learned a lot but here's what really made the night so at the end as a pack per win. And if you are here for Star Wars Unlimited, if you've played that before, you probably understand all this. I kind of like to explain it to a friend, more like my mom, who would have no idea what all this is, but could follow along. So please be patient if I talk about things you've already fully understand, fully aware. But yeah, so at the end, Pack per win for people who win. Um, 
I didn't win, but the store manager or the employee who was running it that night at least, you know, gave out the packs and then kind of just announced, hey, you know, your ASMR friend is a first timer here, first time ever play. And you know, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. And then people got their packs and kind of one by one brought me cards that they didn't want from them. And I ended up coming home with like 150 cards. I mean, that was really honestly just so special and so welcoming, so inviting that, I mean, I had a fun night that night anyway, and that was the cherry on top. And even though I was pretty much thinking, I'll probably do this again, at that moment I was like, okay, I definitely have to come back. It was just so cool. You know, like I said, everyone was so cool like that. So that was about a month ago. And since then, I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've gone to a couple of these open plays, and that's how I found out about this store showdown. And so I thought, you know what? Why not? Like, I'm having fun with it. So I signed up for it. Now, in the open plays, you know, pretty casual. People are obviously still playing their cards and they're building their decks. And the showdown, I also didn't know what to expect from it, you know, how strict and disciplined it might be or, you know, what the culture of that kind of is. But I ended up playing against people in the open uh, plays that had talked about their experience in the showdown. So I thought, okay, well, based on playing against them, I'm pretty sure I see how my experience is going to go. So I'd already signed up for this at that point. And $20 entry, you get two packs, booster packs, just for entering. So not a bad incentive. Uh, I fully expected to get last place. In the open plays, I probably went like 2 and 16. Two wins, for sure. At least more than 10, but yeah between 10 and 16 losses, something like that, give or take, plus or minus, whatever it is. And my victories were, so at the time I was running Ray Red. So kind of building that up and playing with that. And I got my first victory against someone else who was playing a Ray Red. So it still felt good, it still felt like a good achievement, accomplishment. I won my first trading card game match. Um, but essentially it was like playing against myself. You know, maybe different, maybe different cards in, in that pack, in his deck versus mine. But essentially I, I beat my own deck. But again, still felt cool. But my second victory was against a double red Sabine, which I had played one, maybe two Sabines before that. And it felt similar to playing against like Bubba Fett Yellow. Uh, just, I got destroyed when I played against them. And somehow I pulled out the victories. I just had the right cards, the, the right plays, I was able to hold off their aggression towards my base. I was able to heal up and with my Obi-Wan and other tokens, I kept Ray alive a lot longer than I ever had in games before. So I was able to heal more with her. Yeah, so that one felt good. That one actually felt like I won. I mean, yeah, it just felt good. So anyway, that was my experience. Running this Ray Red deck, though, those were my only victories. I would have games where 
I felt like I was doing good. And then in the later parts of the game, I would just start to crumble and get wiped, you know? And I maybe had like a one to two loss in a round, but mostly it just felt like I was either doing really well until I wasn't, or I just couldn't get anything going and lost. So, you know, admittedly, a little bit of doubt probably settled in, but the the week leading up to the showdown, store showdown, I'd also built up this Cad Bane Blue deck. And I just felt, I, I understood the synergy a little bit better of that. And so I thought, okay, I, I got something to work with that. I played it once or twice before with, obviously it didn't win, but even still I just felt like I understood it a little bit more. So the night before I built up and finalized Cad Bane Blue deck for this. And I'll go over my deck for that right now, I guess. So, firstly, the base I was defending was the Remnant Science Facility. And this might have glare on it, probably. Cadbane. So, Cadbane. You know what? Before we go into it, so I'll put the deck list image on the screen for you all. And those will be the cards that I used for the store showdown. And then I'm going to talk about them individually, because why not? So, Cadbane is my leader. When you play an Underworld card, you may exhaust this leader. If you do, an opponent chooses a unit they control and deal one damage to it. So obviously in my deck I have a lot of Underworld cards playing with that synergy to make them put damage onto someone, a unit of theirs. And when Cad Bane flips or deploys with this epic action, six resources required. He's a two power, eight hit points, but with a raid two, so it bumps them up to a four power when attacking. When you play an underworld card, you may choose an opponent. They choose a unit they control, deal two damage to. So, Cad Bane. So obviously when building the deck, the focus was to get underworld to be able to play on his ability. So again, I, I don't know, you, you won't, there are a lot better deck build guides out there. I, I'm not, this isn't going to help you win. This was just my deck that I used, and I want to talk about it. So, first I'll go over ground units, then space units, then upgrades and events. And we'll start with ground units, like I said. And I'll be going from low cost to highest. So first up, Cat Bane Blue. Oh, also, just like my algorithm, I am all over the place. Cat Bane Blue. So because uh, I was doing Remnant Science Facility, I decided to call this deck the Showdown for Science. So. First up on my units, the two, at a cost one, Lady Proxima. Of course, you remember her from Solo, a Star Wars story. Zero power, four hit points. Underworld, of course. When you play another Underworld card, card. When you play an under world card, you may deal one damage to a base. 
And I don't know how these will show up. I don't have a monitor to see how gorgeous I look. Or how beautiful the cards look. So I'll probably put an image of the card on the screen for you all. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, plays super well with Cad Bane's ability. Underworlds, so I can play it out. I like trying to get this card early. Obviously, with a deck build, you, you're playing the ideal, right? The ideal situations. Play this on the first round, and every Underworld card you play after that hits their base, right? Obviously, the real world doesn't work like that. Sometimes she gets ignored, but every now and then, people take her out because she's not going to do any damage back. So, but either way, I have two of her for those situations. Uh, ideally, yeah, I like to play it first round. Well, moving on to our second ground unit. Two of them. Everyone's second favorite bounty hunter, Greedo. Cost one, three power, one. Hit point. Underworld Bounty Hunter card. When defeated, you may discard a card from your deck. If it's not a unit, deal two damage to a ground unit. Now, ideally, that means that when he's taken out of the game, you put him in your discard pile and discard a card from your deck, and you get those two points on their enemy unit. So far, I haven't had that success, even though I have, you know, a fair amount of non-unit cards in this deck. I just haven't hit that, but, you know, certain situations, it might be worth it just to try. Of course, there are times where you'll discard a card that, oh, I wish I didn't discard that because I would love to have that card the next round. It's usually what I'm finding out, but, you know, I haven't played too much with this deck. I want to adjust some things, but ideally, that's how it would work. But anyway, with that three power, getting them in early cost one. You know, you can go after that base right away. You can t take out uh, a little bit of a stronger first play unit potentially of any. So, two of them. Greedo. Alright. Moving right along, we're still at cost one ground units. Two of them, again. It's the Bounty Guild Initiate. So, one power, two HP. So not a strong card necessarily. But when played, if you control another bounty hunter unit, you may deal two damage to a ground unit. So in the ideal world, how awesome would it be? You get two resources on that first turn. If you've been playing this game, you know. I'm a noob. And hi mom, I'm explaining it to you. But yeah, the idea to be able to play Greedo you know, if you have the initiative, play him. Your opponent puts out their unit, and then bam, you play this. You get two damage on it. Potentially, two damage in the early round could take that unit out. And then, if not, uh, well, because there are some that have four HP, but just getting damage that early on. Not a bad thing. So, there you are. I'm moving right along. It's like a trend. Two more cost one units. The Holobon Enforcer. Cost one, one power, four hit points. But this card has grit, so this unit gets plus one, plus zero for each damage on it. The thing 
You know, a little bit of a drawback on this is the bounty. So when this card is defeated by your opponent, they get to draw a card. And I mean, anytime you can get a card in this game, that's good. But especially for control freaks, palpatines, cards that want more cards in their hand. Who doesn't want more cards in their hand? But with the grit and the early play of this, it's hard to pass up. Underworld as well, so obviously still playing well within Cad Bane's abilities. All right, now on to our last cost one unit, and again two of them. It is the Kintan Intimidator, or Kintan, as Lando would pronounce it. Again, it costs one, one HP, sorry, one power, four HP, four hit points. But on attack, it exhausts a defender. So again, you play in the ideal world, right? Playing this early to have it on for next round, but even in later game, perhaps, if you're able to do it, even if this card dies, if your opponent has a powerful unit that is either gonna has the ability to take out a strong unit of yours or just to do a good amount of damage on your base if you have the initiative if you have that play even if it sacrifices him to be able to exhaust that unit and take that that turn away from your opponent um, can be awesome now again, I don't have as many reps, as many games under my belt with this, uh, but that's the ideal play. And, you know, it hasn't been that game changer yet, but again, you know, in the idea out in the ideal world, that's how it would work. Are you having fun? Isn't this so fun? I think it's fun, but let's be honest. If you're not having fun, you're probably, you probably haven't made it this far. You've probably disliked this video and moved on. And hey, if it's not for you, that's fine. But we're moving on now. We're up to the cost twos, and I have three of them. Everyone's favorite. I don't know why. Everyone, like, like anyone outside of Star Wars Unlimited would know. It's the Crafty Smuggler. Two power, two hit points, but comes in shielded. So again, obviously with having the two resources on your first turn, that's why I have three of them. Being able to play him, put a shield on him right away. He's usually the most reliable and dependable first round play so crafty smuggler had to put three of them in there underworld as well so obviously again plays well with cat bane's ability all right moving along cost two the cloud rider three power one hit Underworld, but this card has Ambush. So, in a way, it's almost like an event card because the potential of it to take down an enemy, perhaps earlier on with a, a less powerful enemy unit or an enemy unit that already has some damage on it, take them out so cloud rider is awesome for that and uh you know when you first pull your cards your six cards in the first round it, it wouldn't be the ideal play but if you needed to you could play them on your first you could get them out there and maybe if you have the initiative you could still attack your enemy the next turn with it or the base
space to get some to get three on the board right away that way I mean not necessarily the way you'd want to go I think because I think it's more effective when you're already in play a couple rounds in and the ability to potentially take something down um, like for instance like going against Sabine she flips out or is she five HP. I think she's 5 HP. Never mind. But either way. Don't you love that sidetrack that led to nowhere? Just transitions us into our next unit. The cost to Pike Sentinel. 2 power, 3 HP. Sentinel. Obviously, if you've been playing, you know. But a sentinel means your enemy cannot attack the base or another ground unit. They have to attack this. Unless, of course, your opponent has a saboteur. My least favorite card. Because it always foils my plan. But three of them, love them, pike sentinel. Cost two, play them on the first round, second round, third round. Honestly, they're they're not a bad play at any round almost. So that's why there's three of them. Underworld, begin with Cat Bane. So Pike Sentinel. Uh, I definitely enjoy having them in my in my deck here. All right, moving on. I have no cost three units in this deck. So going into cost four, and again, after playing, um, I need to reassess this deck. And this is kind of a card that I might get rid of, or I might add another one, depending on which way I go with things. Because it's not a terrible card. The Gamorian Guards. So four power, four HP. But if I control another Cunning, Another yellow card. This card becomes a sentinel. Cad Bane is. It's probably glare on that. He is a cunning villain. Yellow black. So I have a lot of yellow cards. So there's a fair amount of probability that this can become a sentinel when I play it. Or if not, play it, and the next card turns it into a Sentinel. So again, yeah, uh, not quite sure how I feel about it, but that ability, that opportunity to get them to be a Sentinel, you know, I think it's kind of worth it. And that's why, again, might ax it, might add another one in. Just see once I kind of go through this deck again fix it. And that's the other thing that I've loved about coming into this world of Star Wars Unlimited. I had no idea how much fun building a deck would be. Finding the cards, you know, you only get three of each. And so you're finding the synergies and what works with your play style, what works with your leaders, your base, your units, like how do you want to play them. There's just a lot of these possibilities. It almost seems like they're unlimited. All right. Well, now, <laughs> what, a, what a great way to transition to our next card. I don't know why. It just is. Four loam. Four loam and a cost four? I have to believe someone was using their brain for that. Probably doesn't mean anything to many more people, but four loan being a cost four, a four power, four HP. Brilliant. I, I love that. He's an underworld bounty hunter. He's also a droid, which I feel like in the Twilight of the Republic uh, cards, the wave three of these cards coming. With all these droid tokens and the separatists, 
I wonder if Forlow might might have some more play. I feel like he's already pretty good. So I only have two of them because I only own two of them. I think that I probably would have three. But he has ambush. So obviously putting him into play, having him attack right away, always feels good. I love an ambush card. And each friendly unit named Zuckus gets plus one, plus one, and gains ambush. Well, and that is why I have one Zuckus. Only one, because I only own one Zuckus right now. At least I would like one more, and I think ideally I would like three of each. Because they play off so well. You put Forlum on, and now Zuckus can come in with Ambush and get a plus one. Really good synergy. He is a cost five, six power, six HP. And he's also a saboteur. So if someone happens to have a Sentinel, maybe they put it after Forlum, then boom, he can cut right through it. And each friendly unit named Forlom gets plus one, plus one, and gains Saboteur. So now you have two Saboteurs on your board, if they're still alive, obviously. But yeah, I want more of these cards. Love the synergy of them. And with my Underworld, Cad Bane, Cunning Villainy, it's a no-brainer. So it's probably a no-brainer that the next two, and again, I'd probably like to have three, Bosk, everyone's favorite bounty hunter, besides Bubba Fett and Dengar and IG-88 and Zuckus and Vorlom, and so on and so forth. Cost five, four power, five hit points, has ambush, so again, being able to play him right away and attack feels good. And when you play an event, you may deal two damage to a unit. So I do have a decent amount of those events. So the potential to have Bosk out there and simply just by playing that event card to get two damage on a unit can be really good. Again, in these small numbers, you know, you get damage on a unit or just lower, uh, lower hit point units, that two damage could take it out. And if not, set it up to be taken down with the next unit on your board. So, yeah, Bosk, I want one more at least. Well, you can only have three anyway, but I want one more. But Bosk, absolutely. Never question having him in that deck, so he will be steady. Well, moving on, we're almost through our ground units. This one costs six. Cunning villain. A four power, four HP. It's the bounty hunter crew. Underworld bounty hunter. Also has ambush. But the nice little extra of this, when played, you may return an event from your discard pile to its owner's hand. So the cost six to get a four power, four HP, you know, that maybe isn't necessarily the best. I don't think it's the worst. But when played, being able to return that event card to my hand, yeah, that makes this card pretty nice, I think, because by the time I play him, I probably have played at least one or more events. So being able to get that event back and potentially use it on that turn or the next round feels good. So I think I actually maybe only do own one. And I like this card. Again, it's one though. I, 
it's maybe in the questionable. I'll have to go through this deck again to kind of see how it all works. But I'm not an expert, so who knows? I might be making the wrong decisions. That's life, live and learn. Now, my last two ground units, also at a cost six, also with ambush, also an underworld, five power, four HP, everyone's favorite. Emphy's Nest. Of course, you remember her from Star Wars. Cut. <laughs> you remember her from Solo, a Star Wars story. So, the incredible thing about this card, Ambush, again, love the Ambush, being able to play it, hate it right away. When a friendly unit, including this unit, is attacking with Ambush, the defender gets negative three plus zero. Well, I guess it says negative zero, but the negative three. So most things that I ambush with this will survive. And look at that. I even got a nice little hyperspace version. That, that ability is so nice. But also in, if the game gets that late, it says when a friendly unit, including this unit, but is attacking using ambush, the opponent gets negative three. So if it comes to it, I'm trying to find, if I have another boss to play and Enfy's Nest is still out there, then yeah, boss also has a high probability of surviving that ambush. You know, with some of these like four limbs, sometimes it's worth the ambush. One for one, take him out whatever it is but if you can ambush something and survive even better so this one only have two of them again i'd like to look at my deck it's the highest cost card in my deck obviously other than the other six cost one i have so maybe i would add another but absolutely love having it in this deck All right, now before we move on, I'd like to show this life counter I got. Everyone always has the same reaction, so I'm very curious if you do too. I'm gonna show it to you. It is nice, isn't it? And what I like about this one in particular is that it's easy to read, so if you have it on your, your table, it's easy for you to read and your opponent to read because if you flip it upside down, it's still nice. All right. So, moving on to our space units. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight space units. Well, first up, and with always going from lowest cost to highest cost, at a cost 2, 2 power, 3 HP, underworld vehicle, freighter, it's the cartel spacer. When played, if you control another cunning unit, which again, in this deck I have many of, I can exhaust an enemy unit that costs 4 or less. So, it's an awesome play for that, you know, again, if, if your enemy has uh, those high-powered uh, units on the board, being able to exhaust that, take that move away from them in this round, great card. And at a cost, too, so again, you could play it your first round, it's that low, but Ideally, you play it later on when exhausting that enemy unit plays better for you. And again, I have to look through my deck, but I like having it in there. I think I would keep it. That makes us go to our second ground unit, 
two of them, the pirated Starfighter. Now, this is the one I'm not too sure about if I'll keep in my deck because while it's a two power, four hit point, underworld, raid one, so it's a three power when attacking, when played, return a friendly non-leader unit to its owner's hand. Now you'll notice it doesn't say you may, you have to return it. And not once, but twice did it come to the time when I didn't have anything else to play. I could afford to put that out, but I had nothing else on my board. And when you do, it just bounces back to you. So it's kind of worthless in that way. Now with this deck, they have some of these cards. Uh, we're bringing a, a unit back to my hand, like Bosk or Forlum, anything with Ambush. I love being able to do that, especially if they're damaged. So that play can be really handy, but also for those other times where I don't have anything else and now I can't do anything and I can't put anything at least on my board, that didn't feel great. So I'm not sure that I would keep it. But everything's up for review. I'll have to go through. Move it on. At a cost two, I have two of them, and I don't know how to say the name. The Private Tier Sick? S C Y K? As if I don't have problems pronouncing names in English? I don't know. So, cost two. Two power, two hit point. When you control another cunning unit, this gains shield. So again, with my many cunning cards in this deck, uh, more often than not, I can put it in with a shield. So being able to get a shielded unit in the space is pretty good. Now, obviously I run pretty light on my space unit. This last one I have three of. At a cost three, I feel like it's almost essential with the cunning villain deck. It's the lurking Thai Phantom. An incredible card. Sure, two power, two hit point, but it gets a raid two. So potential to do four damage to a unit or a base. But the, the, the big thing about this card, this unit cannot be captured, damaged, or defeated by enemy card abilities. So, no takedowns, no leadership ability to ping damage to it. The only way you're taking this guy out is with another space unit. So, I'm fortunate to have three of them. Absolutely love having this card in my deck, and oh yeah, and if you're, if you're able to beef it up as well, I mean, it gets that four power with the rate too. If you can bump that up even more, yeah, this card, really good. Also, another cool thing about it, it's not unique. You know, so there's not that symbol, I'm sure you all know. But if you don't play this game, maybe you're somehow still watching. So there's a potential I could have three of these on at one time. But I've had two, and that feels amazing. So, yeah, Lurking Tie Phantom, it's not going anywhere from this deck. I'll tell you that. All right. Now, before we get on to our upgrades and events, I want to show you my initiation deck. I found this off Etsy. It's a Republican credit replica. It's metal. It's not super heavy, but it's got some weight to it. And I love it. it. Just feels so legit and plays so well as an initiation token. I just wanted to show it off. So there you are. All right, we're moving 
right along. So, let's do upgrades. Here are my upgrade cards. I have no upgrades in this. I don't know. With other decks, like I'm building up a Ray Red, I'm also kind of working on a Cure Green. Uh, I have like a handful of them mainly with the idea to play them with a, a leader. So again, when looking at this, maybe, you know, maybe getting the jet back in here or maybe something else might be worth it, but currently I didn't have that in my showdown. So that move, that moves us on to the events. Oh yes, and we have plenty of them. Our lowest cost at a cost one. No cunning deck is complete without it. Underworld, no less. McClunky. Return a friendly non leader unit, Underworld unit, to its hands. I obviously have a huge amount of Underworld cards. Deal three damage to a unit. Love, love this card. Happy to have three. Uh, I especially love it when I do an ambush with Bosk, let's say. But with anyone, having damage on Bosk, being able to bring him back, and if I have the resources, bring him back and ambush him again on that same turn or on that same round, same phase. I don't know what the terms are. My brain is starting to mesh. But being able to do that play getting that three damage on that unit. So maybe taking out that unit so then when I bring boss back, potentially take down the other unit that's in play. Just at a cost one, fantastic card. Love this card. Also, it's an underworld card. So it plays with Cad Bane's underworld ability. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely a staple of this deck. It's not going anywhere. Rest assured, in case you were worried. So, next up, at a cost two, Surprise Strike. Attack with a unit, it gets plus three for this attack. Hey, what more do I have to say? If I can get three more damage out of a unit, absolutely. I especially like it with, you know, usually when you take out Cad Bane, if I have the extra resources and I have the card to do it, Cad Bane has raid, so he's at a four. Now being able to hit that base for seven, oof, oh, that feels good. That feels good. But really with anything, I mean, that plus three, you know, with many of these units, it has that ability to take down another unit, so. And if not, again, to get good damage on it, so. Yeah, a fantastic card. That is why I have three of them. All right. Next up, only two of them. Cost two, no good to me dead. So, you can exhaust a unit, that unit can't ready this round, including during the regroup phrase. Phrase. I always say phrase. Phase. The regroup. Regroup. Phase. Regroup. Phase. So this is another one. You know, the idea of exhausting that unit, taking that turn away from them, especially on high powered units. Or if there's that situation where you have a vulnerable unit that either way, one of those is going to be able to take it down. If you can exhaust that one, that way they have to play, you know, a different way. And so, yeah, just being able to take that, that turn away from your opponent. I like it. So that's why I got two of them, you know, if that opportunity. Um, yeah, especially, you know, if someone puts an upgrade on a, a unit, they're beefed up now, and just being able to take them, not just for that, 
turn, but then the next one. So taking away potential two attacks. I like it for that reason. Alright. Well, next up. I only have two of these. I think I would want three. At a cost three. The waylay. Return a non-leader unit to its owner's hand. Now, the great thing about this is that it doesn't specify friendly or enemy. So you can do both. So again, with situations with my ambush cards like boss, being able to take him back, especially if they're damaged. Or if your enemy plays that big card, obviously not one that does something when played, like <laughs> you wouldn't want to waylay Vader back just to have him be able to play it and get that ability again. But maybe you do, you know. These games, all sorts of situations, but they put out a big unit, you know, maybe like a, a chewy sentinel, and you're you're trying to go after the base. Well, boom, bounce them back to your enemy's hand, especially if they don't have the resource to put that chewy back and that sentinel. So now you still have those attacks potentially on their base. Yeah, waylay, great play with that. Our next card at a cost three, I have two of them. Power of the Dark Side. An opponent chooses a unit they control, defeat that unit. So, obviously, we're talking about the ideal play. Ideally, it's when maybe they have that one unit, only one unit on that board, but it's a good unit. Well, you play that, they have no choice but to destroy that unit. But if they have two, two good units, maybe they have one in space and one in ground, now they have to decide which one they want to take down. So either way, taking down a unit feels good. Making your opponent make that choice, kind of fun. So yeah, at a cost three, not bad at all. I like it. All right, well, moving on with cost four, fell the dragon. I have two of them. Defeat a non-leader unit with five or more power. So obviously, late game, that big unit is played. If you have it, being able to take them down, yeah, fantastic for that reason, especially those big scary ships or anything that can deal, you know, six or more damage, something like that, being able to take it down never feels bad. Which brings us to our next final card, cost six. This one is more of the Hail Mary, uh, if I need it, defeat a unit, Rivals Fall. Now it's a high cost, six cards, but again, Perhaps in later, well, it has to be later in the game where you have the resources available, but if push comes to shove and you need to take a unit down, not bad to have it. But yeah, only one of them. And again, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at this deck again, but you know, just having these takedown cards always feels good. So that all 50 cards I used in my Cad Bane Blue in my first ever store showdown. So again, coming back to it, my full expectation was that I would get last. However many players it would be, I'm going to be last. Now that's my expectation, but it also means that going in, my victory then would be, okay, if I can get second from last, and I came up with this expectation, again, after playing players at open play, based on my losses and playing against players that have placed higher in these store showdown. Yeah, my expectation was to get last. I had my first showdown, and I decided to go with Cad Bane Blue. And I played against a green Palpatine, a green Tarkin, and 
Oh, and a red Bubba Fett. There were 19 participants at this store showdown, which it had the space. It's not the biggest store, but yeah, 19 people playing that day. Pretty cool. While I was able to at least get a one game win, so I went one and two against each of my opponents, but that means that I lost those rounds, didn't win any of my rounds. I placed 19th. That's right. I met my expectation. 19 out of 19. Hey, what can I say? I'm still learning, still getting the hang of this. And I think a lot of learning about this is learning what doesn't work more than what did. So going up against Palpatine and Tarkin, oof. With this deck and these cards, I wouldn't want to do it again. That's why I need to look at this deck again to see what I would want to play with. And kind of working on what sideboard I'd want to do if I go up against opponents like that. But again, I'm working on multiple decks now. So Cat Bane Blue, still want to work on my Ray Red. Doing a Cure Green. That's what it is. It's just fun putting up these combos and playing. But I think the big part of what I enjoy about this is that it gets me out of the house. And even though I'm a gamer, I love my video games. It's good to have an excuse to get out. So, and the fact of uh, every week there's something going on at different stores. So potentially a couple times a week, and I've done that a couple times a week, I can play this game with people that also enjoy and like playing it. And I haven't run into any terrible people. I feel like everyone's been pretty awesome and pretty chill. So I've never walked away thinking, well, that was awful. Every time I walked out, it's been a great experience. And again, I'm learning, learning from my losses. Anytime a card is played against me, it's like, oh, okay, maybe I should consider putting that in a deck that I'm building. Especially early on. You know, now, now I'm kind of more aware. I've looked at TCG and these things, so, you know, now I don't necessarily see the cards I haven't been too familiar with. Maybe just haven't played against them, but certainly, like, Pillage was one of the first cards in my first night of played against where you have to discard two cards. And at the time, I only had two cards in my hand. So just neutered my round there. Like, oh, okay, I can't play anything. And that's where I thought, oh, okay, I want three of those in my Ray Red deck. Absolutely. So, yeah. Again, it's... It's kind of that lesson of failure, you know. Yes, failure can be the best teacher of all. And most importantly, it's just fun. It's getting out of the house and playing games with people that enjoy it. So, it's what I've been spending a lot of my last month here playing. Uh, thank you, Algorithm. I should, I should apologize to the algorithm because it doesn't know what to do with me. I put up Cyberpunk and then Lake and now Star Wars Unlimited. What's going on? But if you've made it this far, if you're still watching, then why don't you subscribe? Come and check, see what the next video is going to be. Who knows? Who knows? But just remember to be kind to yourself and be well to others. And may the force be with you.